Hi, it's Mark here. So today, Ripple Training is releasing a brand new tutorial called Animating with Behaviors in Motion with a focus on basic motion and parameter behaviors. And for this week, we've got it offered at a really great price, so please check it out. In today's MacBreak Studio, I'm gonna pull from that tutorial to show you how you can create a specific animation with several behaviors. Okay, here we are in motion. I've imported two graphics, a dartboard and a dart. And my goal is to animate the dart to fly to the dartboard. Now, right away, we really can't see the dartboard very well because of this black background. So let's address that first. I'll go to the library. I'll go to generators. And in the generators category, I'll locate the gradient generator and add it to this group. Then shift command left bracket to move it to the bottom of the group. I'll go to the inspector, open the gradient, change it from linear to radial set the start to zero, zero. I'll set the start color to sort of a light blue, something like that, and the outer color to a darker blue. Then I'll right click in the canvas, choose edit position, and just drag this out to create kind of a nice background. Great. Now this dartboard, I wanna kind of turn on an angle to make this a little 3D looking. I'm gonna press Q for the Adjust 3D Transform tool that lets me turn it right here in the canvas. And I'll angle it a bit and I'll bring it over to the side, maybe angle a little bit more. And now it looks a little bit flat. So from the filters pop-up menu, I'll choose stylize extrude. And there's an on-screen control to adjust that extrusion. I'll bring it out a little bit, a little hard to see. So in the inspector for the extrude filter, I'll change the extrude style from shading to gradient then I'll open up this gradient and click right here to flip the gradient, then change the start of the gradient to something a little bit lighter, and then the end of the gradient to something a little bit darker. Maybe give it a little bit of color. And that way we can have some depth to our dartboard. Okay, the next step is to animate our dart, and we're gonna use three behaviors to do that. First, I'll press Shift S to go back to my Select Transform tool. And then from the behaviors pop-up menu, I'll choose basic motion, motion path, in order to have the dart travel into the dartboard. The default motion path is a straight line that lasts for the whole project. I only want it to last about a second. So I'll double click in the time code field, type one period return, and then press O, which will trim that motion path behavior. So now it lasts just one second. I want it to end pretty much in the center of the dartboard, so I'll bring that point over there, and I'll drag this point off the screen so the dart starts outside the uh, project. Move the playhead back, and then I'm gonna double click to add another control point and drag that up to give that motion path a little arc. So now the dart will travel along it like that. Of course, it doesn't look quite right, so we need another behavior. Behaviors, basic motion, snap alignment to motion. And now the dart travels along that motion path not quite right yet. Let's select the motion path, press Shift O to move to its end, select the snap alignment to motion behavior and tap O to trim it to match. And then let's make some adjustments to it. Over in the inspector, first I'll change the axis from horizontal to vertical, which is better, but now we have a backwards flying dart, not quite what we want. So I'll invert the axis by clicking the checkbox here. There we go. And now the dart will fly over and land in the dartboard. Of course, when it lands, it suddenly reverts to its original position, so I'll just rotate it to match that angle for when it lands, right about like that. Great, now I'm gonna adjust the anchor point on the dart to the tip of it, Shift S, and then I'll adjust this motion path just so that the tip lands pretty much right in the center there. And if I don't want to see this bounding box, I can press command forward slash to hide it and see if we've got the right thing. Yes. Now it looks like it's coming a little too far, so let's address that. I'm going to press spacebar command and drag to get very close here. And then I'll press command forward slash to turn the overlays back on. I basically want to add a mask so that we can see the tip embedded into the center of the dartboard. So for my mask tool right here, I'll choose a Bezier mask and I'll draw a little mask that covers the tip. 
Now it suddenly jumps when I do that. I'll press Shift Z to jump back out. And now all we see is the tip. So over in the inspector for the mask, I'll invert it. And now we see the dart, but not the tip. Spacebar command to zoom back in and we can see that tip is now embedded in the dartboard. Great, Shift Z to back out. Now this motion path, the travel doesn't look quite right. So I'm gonna select this motion path behavior and change the speed from constant to accelerate. So we get a faster fly in at the end there. So it kind of punches into the dartboard. And that looks good, but I want it to wiggle a little bit. So we'll come to our third behavior now. I'm gonna use a parameter behavior called overshoot. I'm gonna apply it to the rotation. So that's why I move the anchor point to the tip. So with this dart selected, if we go to properties for rotation and click this downward facing arrow, I can choose add parameter behavior overshoot and I want this overshoot to start when the arrow hits the board so I'll select one of these other behaviors shift O to move the player to the end of it select overshoot tap I to trim its endpoint there and let's say it lasts for a second as well so I'll double click the time code field to period press O and now the overshoot lasts for one second I'll also move my play range out point close to the end of that overshoot so we can just focus on this area here. And now when I play, the arrow comes in, but we don't see anything happen. And that's because by default, the overshoot has starting and ending values of zero. Now, I wanna keep this ending value at zero. If I were to change it, it would affect the rotation of the arrow after the end of the behavior, which I don't want. I just wanna affect it at the beginning. So I'll move the play head back to the start, shift I, and then I just want a little bit of wiggle. So I think when it first hits, it should kind of jump up a little bit. So I'll add a negative rotation, actually probably about negative three, just a little bit. And now when I play that back, the arrow hits and it moves a little bit, but doesn't really look quite right. So adjusting the overshoot all comes down to the ramp duration and cycles. The default value of 35% for the ramp duration is way too much. So I'm gonna drop that down to about 2%. And now when we play back, we get a better wiggle, but it still doesn't look very natural. And that brings us to the cycles, because over the duration of that one second, we have three cycles of that. I wanna really crank that up. I'm gonna use something more like 10. And now we get something that looks a little more natural, maybe not completely natural, but let's say we wanna overemphasize the wiggle. But now we have the dart look like it's flying in and sticking into the board. Now, what's so great about these behaviors is they're so easy to adjust as opposed to keyframes. For example, I'll select the dart, Command D to duplicate it. I'll take that duplicate and drag it down the timeline a little bit, expand my range. And then for the motion path for this dart, let's say I want it to hit down over here. And then I'll change the flight path a little bit too, maybe a little bit higher. And then at the end of it, the other thing I need to do, I'll press Shift S for the Select Transform tool, and I'll align it to that path for when it lands. So now if I deselect everything, I have two darts fly in, into different places, and I don't need to adjust anything else. Everything just works. And finally, here's an example where I did three darts. So if you like that, you're gonna love the full tutorial. Check it out at the link below. Subscribe, click the bell, and we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.